All right, guys, I wanted to make a quick video showing how these rear HVAC systems work on a 2000, this is a 2001 Yukon, um, but the Tahoe and the Suburban and the Yukon XL are obviously gonna be about the same thing. So you pull off this back uh, right quarter, this back panel, it's on the uh, passenger rear. In order to get this off, there's a screw right here. It's that black knob thing. You just turn that to unscrew that. There's a plug down here that you got to unplug. And then there's a um, screw here. I believe it was a seven millimeter. You take that off. There's another plug right here. There was like a little little clip. You gotta just kind of pull that back. And then the whole thing just kind of, you kind of just have to work it. This, I pulled this panel out, which allowed me to get that down. And then it just kind of slipped out underneath this. So <clears throat> the way these work is there's a blower right here that uh, turns on and blows air through here, down through this. And it either goes up the wall here and comes out on the ceiling, or it comes down the bottom here, which is your bi-level, like the heater at the bottom comes out right down here. So basically this, this thing has two actuators, is what they're called. There's one right here, and this is for the temperature of the air. It diverts, it's a little door inside that diverts the air either across the air conditioning unit, which sits right down here, or across the heater core, which is this right here. So if the pan, if the door goes, you know, like this, it blows the air across the heater core, the air then comes out wherever this actuator tells it to go. If you want it to go across the cold air, it'll go like this, blow the air through the cold, and then again out to where this actuator tells it to go. <clears throat> so, I want you to get a look at this actuator right now. It's a little notch. You can kind of see that notch is right here, facing down. I'm going to go ahead and change the temperature. This is on hot. I'm going to change the temperature and I want you to watch and listen to how that works. So I'm going to reach over here, put it on cold. This is an aftermarket actuator, by the way. I just replaced the original. This is a Dorman something, I can't remember. 604111, I believe is what this one is. See, now you see the little notch. I can get it to, it's facing up. That's right. Right there. So now let's watch this one. Right now it is on floor level. So I'm gonna reach up here and I'm gonna change it to to the top. This one's a little quicker. So that just changed from like this to like this. So now the air, instead of blowing down here, is gonna be blowing up here and come out of these, these top vents. So let's do it again. I'll put the air back down to the bottom. So the switch up here tells this little actuator where to aim its door so the air should go down or go up. It's actually controlled by this little module, which I believe on the newer versions is actually sitting right here. Like 2003, I think they changed it. So for the newer ones, it sits right here. But this is the little control module that tells these two motors, the two actuators, the front one for the direction of the air the air direction door, I think is what it's called, something like that. And then this one controls the temperature. You know, where does the air blow, across the heater core or across the AC condenser, which is down here. It also controls the fan speed for the automatic functions of the, uh, of the system. So that's basically the way they work. I was having some trouble. My heater was blowing just hot back here and the front was, was beautifully ice cold. So, I kind of assumed it was this rear actuator was just stuck on heat and I was right. I came back here and I pulled the original apart and uh, so this sits sits like that. I went in here and I pulled it apart 
I'm sorry, it doesn't sit like that. It sits like this. It sits like this. So I pulled it apart and look at that big crack on that gear, right? that main gear. So that gear couldn't even grip onto that metal part, which is what was actually turning the door. So the actuator probably works in this, but because that gear was cracked for whatever reason, um, you know, it just wasn't turning the door. So the door was stuck on heat. <clears throat> this part from a dealer, I think was like $248. I found the original AC Delco on Amazon for, I think it was 108 but then my local store here had this, this Dorman, and I think they had it for 128 or something, and then it was on Amazon for 68 I believe, so I went ahead and got that one, and if it fails, I can, I can tear it apart and, and fix it now that I understand the way these things work. These two actuators are actually identical. The original, the OEM numbers on them are actually the exact same. You can get that to focus. Oh no, they're actually a little different. The other numbers are the same. That number is the same. And I wonder what the difference is. This one might be the 106. There was a big confusion on this whether you use the 604-111 or the 604-106. In the end, I got conflicting information from everywhere and just went with the 111 and it seems to be working. So, um, I would say they are interchangeable. Maybe that one on the left for the uh, direction of the air is slightly different. Oh, one more thing. Once you get these things installed, they have a little calibration period. Um, there's Again, there's instructions online for how to do that, but I believe on mine, I just made sure that the systems were all off in the off position. And I turned the key off, and then I came back here and I unplugged the old one, this little plug. There's three, uh, I think there were seven millimeter screws. Pulled the other one off, put the new one in here. Um, you have to align the little door lever with this. And then plugged it in. And then I believe I just turned on the key and waited like a minute. And this thing took about 40 seconds, and this little notch here just kind of went up and down a few times, kind of calibrating, telling this unit you know, where hot and cold are and how far it can go. So let me put it one more time on the hot for you. You can watch it. So right now it's changing that door so the air will blow over the heater core instead of over the air conditioning condenser. And that's it. So sometimes people get these little actuators and they say, you know, oh, mine doesn't work, blah, blah, blah. The only reason it's doing that is because you haven't calibrated. The, uh, the actuator so what a lot of people recommend to do is go into your go into the trunk pull out that fuse um, that's marked rear HVAC it's on, kind of on the right hand side about halfway up I think it was a 30 amp fuse on this 2001 and you just pull that out for like a minute to let this thing lose power and then when you turn it back on it'll just recalibrate itself because it needs to know how far it needs to go according to the temperature that you select. You know, if you have it halfway, it's gonna go halfway, all the way cold, all the way hot, whatever. So just make sure you do that before you complain that you got a broken unit, because that's what a lot of people are, where a lot of people are getting hung up. So anyway, here's my video. I hope it helps you guys. I know that I had to do a ton of research and, uh, you know, I ended up being right that it was that actuator. If you guys are having any problems similar to mine, I hope this helps you kind of walk through how these work and where they go. I'm not a mechanic by trade, but uh, I feel like I have a lot better understanding for how these work, and I hope this video helps you as well.